Let's see if I can get the button right. Backlog! 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 Oh yeah, baby. It's backlog time. What's that, Will? That is a segment of the Wolf Den Podcast where we go through our entire video game collection. 973 games in this here video game collection split between the two of us over the course of almost 40 years. Because remember, I'm old, kids. Uh, today, we're going to pick one of those games at random and talk about it regardless of whether or not we've played it. Number 361 out of the random number generator. 361. That would be Resident Evil. Evil remake. GameCube. GameCube. Well, yeah, it selected the Switch version, but we originally played it on GameCube. I happen to have it on Switch. I have it on a lot of systems, actually. But yeah, we played it on we played the GameCube version. This is the second Resident Evil game in a month. Yeah, we talked about Resident Evil 5. Yep. Which we, we, we like we're hesitant to recommend. Uh I am not hesitant to recommend this one though. This game is good. So we jumped into the Resident Evil series on the second game. Yes, on N64. N64. So yeah. we never played the first one until this game. No. Part of the reason why I wanted a GameCube was because of this game. Right. Because I liked Resident Evil 2 so much, and I wanted to play the first one, but we didn't have a PlayStation. But when they announced the GameCube, they announced that all the Resident Evil games were going to come to the GameCube, uh, starting with a remake of Resident Evil 1. And I'm like, hell yeah. Sign me up. Now, is that because they made Resident Evil 4? So, I think what happened was... Because uh, right now, a lot of games, when they come to... uh, Like, when they're making a sequel on another console, yeah. sometimes they will just port the older games in that engine. Yeah, because I think what happened was Shinji Mikami was, like, shopping around Resident Evil to, like, try and get, like, a, a good deal with, like, the publishers... And they had a bad experience at Microsoft. They didn't really like the deal they got at PlayStation. And then when they went to Nintendo, they said, this, this is the only company that understands what we want to do. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put Resident Evil 4 on the GameCube. And we're going to put all the Resident Evil games on here. And we're going to start with a remake of Resident Evil 1. Yeah. Uh, I guess the GameCube didn't feel like the adult console. No. But uh, this was, Nintendo was probably like, this is our end to try to get Nintendo some tried a lot of games. things to like make it like a, a more mature system. Yeah. Uh, and this was definitely one of them. Uh, no, the other one was Eternal Darkness. Eternal Darkness. Yeah. yeah. Which is their own game. Yeah. Um, this is amazing, though, this game. This, this is game a great was very game. good. Yeah. Um, I it, would say this is probably the best way to experience the first Resident Evil. Th I would say this is the best way to experience the classic style Resident Evil, period. Because yeah. this is the original style of Resident Evil. It's fixed camera angles. It's uh, clunky controls. Uh, it's bad aiming. Uh, it's much more focused on puzzle solving and running away from zombies than it is anything else. Uh, but the way this game handles it in particular is so meticulously well thought out and well designed that like you kind of get you know you kind of just like get absorbed into it and you forget about all the problems um that the dated architecture of the game seems to have yeah. now what this game added was the uh, it added a lot like it added, it added a, lot. a lot to the formula of the game one of the things is that when you kill a zombie it stays there for the whole game yes because what happens is they have the opportunity to resurrect themselves and become the Crimson Head zombies, yes. which are faster, stronger, and you know harder to take down. And it's random. Like you might be walking by a body, and all of a sudden it comes up and starts coming after. Yeah, you. and but, that is it. Adds another level of uh, anxiety to they, the game. They do give you a way to like you know make sure you don't get a Crimson Head. You can either you know score a perfect headshot, which you know is not easy in this game or you do this or you light the body on fire yeah <laughs> but you know that's resource management you have to make sure you have gasoline you have to make sure you have a lighter you have to make sure like you you know the body's still there so you can run back you know it's all these different things that like try to make the game you know more than originally was on yeah. playstation it added a whole extra sub story with the lisa trevor story arc which is one, still one of the most terrifying things in any video game ever so yeah so They've recently remade Resident Evil 2. Yes. But that 
does not have the tank control. No. So in the original Resident Evil games, the camera gets fixed to a, like a seemingly random point in the room, <laughs> like in the corner, like yeah. a security camera. Uh, and you're, the controls of the game are very strange by today's standards. Yeah. When you hit up on the control stick, the character moves forward yeah. no matter what way the camera is facing the character will move forward if you hit up if yeah. that makes any sense uh and the camera angle changes so the direction that you move changes yeah the whole time so by today's standards it is very strange i but i think that that is a uh, uh fundamental mechanic to yes. how uh to why these games were so interesting yes i do know that for later versions of this game because it, it did come out to other systems eventually it came out on ps4 xbox one uh switch and pc those versions attempted to fix the control scheme to make it more modernized more fluid um so that you know up on the controller is just forward um so and it also added like proper widescreen support for modern displays. It's a, it's an option though, isn't it? It's an option. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't so have to use. You those. don't have to use it. Yeah. So, but like that might help mitigate so like for people who are not used to this kind of video game. Because let's be real, a lot of you people watching are probably not used to this kind of video game. That does go a long way to help. I don't think they will remake. I don't think they will make Resident Evil games again with these types of controls. Absolutely not. So. I think it's kind of important for people if they are interested in Resident Evil at all to try one of these games out. Yes. And I think that this is like the, I guess, easiest to get into because is, it's at least a little more modern than the yeah. original uh, Resident Evil. Absolutely. Yeah, no, this is, of all the that style Resident Evil game, like this is the one to get because it's definitely the most modernized. You still get all, like all the sensibilities of like that classic style but in a more digestible uh, form, I guess you could say. Yeah, and I always talk about how uh, video game controls have kind of all conformed. They've kind of, like, there's an expectation on how games control these days. Yeah. So there's a lot of games that feel samey and boring. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you want something that fucking changes things up, if you want to experience something like you haven't before, I honestly think that this is something to go back to yeah we don't often on the backlog suggest playing the game <laughs> uh and i think that this is one of those one of those that yeah no is I, worth this, going this back is to. definitely like i mean it's been a long time since we've said like definitely play this game but like this is definitely a game i recommend playing if you've never played it before even if you have played it before it might be worth going back and like checking out um you know, it, you know, it is spooky season. Might as well, you know. Yeah. Uh, Halloween's right around the corner. Um, the game, the game is, you know, it's a survival horror game. It is many people say the original, not the original survival horror game, but the one that definitely, like, you know, it changed a lot about made the, the genre popular. Yeah. Uh, it's more about exploration and puzzle solving and resource management than it is like about uh white knuckle action that the later games uh, became more famous for. Um, so it is a game that like you can kind of like take your time with. Um, but that said, once you like know the game and like have experienced it, you can go through the game faster and faster and faster. And like people, people beat this game in like two hours. You might need to look some stuff up. Yeah, this, this like game. these these are definitely games we need a player's guide for. We need a player's the guide for uh, two. We had the player's guide for one. Yeah, I think we yeah. got it because we had the players guide. For yeah, two. we were like, we just knew like we're gonna need it. Yeah, so uh, there's probably more looking stuff up than there would be in a modern Resident Evil game. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean the there's a big uh, big focus on puzzle solving, but also there's uh they still have a lot of the suspense. Yeah. Of it being a survival horror because of the fact that zombies can come out of it basically. Anywhere. Yeah um uh, in this game you know like i said they added a lot of um story elements and you know changed around the zombies but they also like there's a very particular a very famous moment in the original version of resident evil where the doll comes through the window and they they kept that in the game but they changed when it happened <laughs> so like you think it's gonna happen but like oh you don't you're so okay it's fine everything's and then like you know a few minutes later then it happens and like yeah. it just, every everything it does it like keeps you 
on your toes. It keeps you on your guard. It like makes you think. It makes you aware of like your surroundings and what you're doing. And like it really makes you feel like you're alone in this mansion trying to survive. Resident Evil is really good at uh, subverting expectations like that. I, yeah. I think it's Resident Evil 2 that has some moments that stick in my brain. One of them is uh, every time you open a door in the game, it goes into. Oh, it's doing it right now. Yeah. It does a little cutscene where. It, yeah it very slowly opens the door and that's just a way so they can load the next yeah, area. Yeah, mess the loading screen. There's one random door in Resident Evil 2, the original Resident yeah. Evil 2, where the zombies come out of it. Yeah. And it freaks you out because the whole <laughs> game, you're used to yeah. the same cutscene and you think you're safe in that cutscene. And then all of a sudden, zombies come out of it. Yeah. Another way they subverted expectations for me is you can tell in older games when something is an asset that you can uh, manipulate or move or something, or when something is a background asset. Yeah. Kind of like in old cartoons, you can tell yeah. when something is part of the background or when something is part of the fork, uh, or something that's going to move. Yeah. Um, and they did that in one of the rooms. Something that was clearly the background, all of a sudden the tyrant busts through it yeah. out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> so yes yeah resident evil is very good at doing stuff like and that. i think because now the way resident evil games back then worked was it was pre-rendered background so like those were like made ahead of time and then the the character models were you know full 3d polygonal uh yeah, you can see it models. here you can see yeah. how, how pixelated the background is but that being said this game was so goddamn beautiful that like <laughs> it blurred the line between like what was pre-rendered and what was full 3d like you genuinely could not tell the difference between the two and the way they would add like, you know, effects in the pre-render backgrounds, like the lighting, like the flickering of the candles, like, you know, things blowing in the wind. Like it just, it kept adding to that aura of like being a, a part of this like incredibly realistic looking world. Oh, there's a zombie. There it is. Yeah. Yeah, this whole playthrough, there's like been barely any zombies. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's great. Yeah, I sh would be remiss to mention, of course, this is the game where you, you can choose between two characters. You play as Jill Valentine or Chris Redfield. Uh, both of them have unique experiences throughout the uh, throughout the storyline. Uh, this version of the game adds, uh, you know, ways to like affect the ending. Uh, you can get, you know, a good ending if everybody survives. You get a bad ending if everybody dies um so forth and so on uh i would i would say you know it like it doesn't really affect difficulty but if you pick chris he starts out with a knife and only a knife uh you have to find the gun uh jill starts out with her gun so that's something to keep well, in she mind. has less health right that the thing? i don't think so because she had something else wrong with her she had the lock pick too oh yeah so is that easy mode? are you saying it's easy mode? i'm saying it might be a little <laughs> bit easier um yeah i would say worth checking out if you've never uh played a resident evil game this is a great place Absolutely. to start or if you've played more modern resident evil games and you want to go back this is the way to go back yeah i that i like i said this is definitely of all the classic style resident evil games i think this is the one that you know still holds up the best and still is the one to play today uh and you can either go back and play it on a gamecube yeah. or uh they have a the new version on the switch yeah, Switch, PS4, PS5, Xbox, PC. Um, I and, believe and they it's... have options to use the original controls. Yes. on those versions. Mm -hmm. so, uh, you have plenty of ways to go back and play this game if yeah. you want to. So, do it. <laughs> that's this game. Yeah. That's Resident Evil for mm -hmm. the GameCube and and elsewhere. Uh, so you got it on the Switch? Is that what happened? I th I think I bought it on Switch. I bought it on a pack with Resident Evil 4 or something. No, they came in a pack with Resident Evil 0. Because those oh. games get bundled all the time. Yeah, Resident Evil 0 is very similar. It, it yeah. looks the same. Uh, yeah. And that is a new game that came yeah. out on the GameCube. Uh, it was fine. That yeah, was a fine that's, that's, if we ever get to that backlog, I got opinions on that. Um, yeah, I think I got it in the pack with 0. And then I actually, for the PlayStation 4, I won it in a contest. <laughs> I entered an online contest and I got the code for Resident Evil 4. Okay. So, yeah. Good times. And it is verified on Steam Deck. So, $20 right now. Uh, I think I think Jill had less health. Okay. Nope, somebody on this Reddit thread is saying that Chris also is more likely to 
instant kill with a headshot. Interesting. I've never heard that yeah, or, or thought yeah. about that. I also just saw a clip of Jill instantly killing someone with a headshot. So. <laughs> oh, and now somebody's... Oh, wait. Jill is weak, and she was weak on the GameCube. However, the game has defense items, and Jill has enough inventory to carry a full heal and still have more slots than giving her more effective HP. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching the backlog, everybody. Check out Resident Evil. Yeah. And come to a podcast sometime if you're watching this afterwards. Nobody does. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>